My daughter was born with a congenital heart defect. My wife is a pharmaceutical researcher, and the company she works for developed a special medication for a rare heart disease. When my daughter's heart stopped, she urgently needed the life-saving medication, but my wife gave it to her unforgettable first love instead. In the end, my daughter missed the optimal rescue time and died on the way to the hospital. Chapter 1. Hannah was born with a congenital heart defect. When she was born, she was a tiny, adorable bundle of joy. I was immersed in the joy of becoming a father for the first time. The doctor's words hit me like a thunderbolt. Your daughter has a congenital heart defect. You should be prepared for the worst. Just after being delivered via C-section, my daughter was rushed to the neonatal intensive care unit. Through the thick isolation door, I saw my daughter lying quietly in the sterile incubator. Her dark, curious eyes were observing this new world. At that moment, I silently vowed that no matter the cost, I would ensure my daughter survived. Hannah started undergoing heart surgeries from the age of two. At such a young age, she endured hardships that her peers never experienced. My wife, Rena Lin, is a pharmaceutical researcher. Their company developed a special medication for heart diseases that has won multiple medical patents domestically. Although Hannah's surgeries were successful, she couldn't run and play like other children. I gave her a heart rate monitor watch to keep track of her heart's condition. Over the years, I worked tirelessly, earning promotions and salary increases. I had already spent over a million yuan on Hannah's treatments, but I had no regrets. My biggest wish was for my daughter to grow up healthy and happy. My wife worked at a pharmaceutical company, and her job was relatively easy. She spent a lot of time with Hannah and was knowledgeable in pharmacology and emergency measures. Recently, our nanny took leave for personal reasons, so Hannah was being looked after by her mother. When I received a call from Hannah, I was working overtime at the office. Her heart rate monitor was sending out continuous alarms, followed by her faint, intermittent voice. Daddy, my chest feels tight. I can hardly breathe. My heart leapt into my throat. I grabbed my car keys and rushed home. Where's your mother? Hannah was sobbing softly, terrified. Mommy went out. I'm alone at home. My mind went blank. How could my wife leave our daughter alone at home in her condition? I had no time to question my wife, so I drove home recklessly, running red lights along the way. Recently, my wife's unforgettable first love had returned to the country, and she had been acting like she had lost her soul. Her attention was no longer on our daughter, nor on me. When I finally reached home, I found my daughter's small body curled up on the floor, her face pale and lips bloodless. She groaned in pain. Daddy, I feel so bad. I can hardly breathe. Her heart rate had reached a dangerously high 120. I quickly carried her to the bed and performed CPR. Despite my efforts, her condition did not improve. I searched the house for the life-saving medication but couldn't find it. Panic set in, and I shakily called my wife. As expected, she mercilessly hung up on me. Chapter 2 After much difficulty, the call finally connected, and my wife's impatient voice came through the phone. Oscar Wu, can't a married person have some personal space? I'm very busy right now, and I don't have time for your nonsense. Hearing my wife's distant words made my heart ache uncontrollably. I tried to suppress my anxiety. Are you with Makoto? Rina became instantly furious, her privacy exposed. Makoto got hurt. Can't I come to see him? I couldn't help but let out a bitter laugh. So you just abandoned our daughter to see your unforgettable first love? Rina's tone was urgent. Makoto was racing on the street and got hurt. It seems his heart is also having problems. So I rushed to bring him the medication. Her words were piercing. And I interrupted her. So you took our daughter's life-saving medication? She snorted in displeasure. Oscar, would you only be happy if Makoto died? My heart felt tightly constricted. Taking away our daughter's life-saving medication will kill her. I can't reason with someone as narrow-minded as you. Goodbye. Before I could finish speaking. My wife had already grown tired of the conversation. Without hesitation, she hung up the phone. My daughter's condition was critical, but the ambulance had not yet arrived. Daddy, Hannah can hold on. Let's not disturb mommy. If we disturb her, she will be angry. I told a kind lie. Mommy is just too busy to come. You are her treasure. She would never abandon you. Hannah's heart rate wouldn't come down, and her face was growing paler by the minute. Every minute of delay increased the danger for my daughter. In my panic. I kept calling my wife over and over again, but she not only refused to answer, she eventually turned off her phone. Hearing the automated message that the phone was off, I felt as if I had fallen into an ice pit. The chill spread from my feet to every part of my body. Hannah's face turned blue, and she showed signs of cardiac arrest. The ambulance arrived and rushed her to the hospital. Doctors and nurses took turns performing CPR on her, but Hannah never regained a heartbeat. In the end, my daughter died on the way to the hospital, watching my daughter with no pulse or breath. I cried my heart out. I watched helplessly as she died before my eyes, her body gradually growing cold. I couldn't fathom that my beloved daughter had left me forever. 
Father and daughter were now separated by life and death. The doctor pronounced her dead, recording the time of death with a heavy hand. I collapsed helplessly at the door of the emergency room, my mind a blank. Even after Hannah's death, my wife Rena's phone remained off. Her mind was on Makoto, not caring about our daughter's fate. Hannah had always been considerate, fearing she was a burden to us, living cautiously every day. Even when her mother abandoned her and took her life-saving medication, she never blamed her. This kind little angel left her loving daddy behind and went to heaven alone. I returned to an empty home in a daze, smoking one cigarette after another on the balcony. At dawn, she still hadn't come back. It wasn't until 3 a.m. that she finally returned home. Chapter 3. Why was your phone off? Afraid I'd interrupt your reunion with Makoto. Rina reacted violently to my questioning. Oscar, Makoto and I are innocent. Stop slandering us. I sneered. Hiding your whereabouts and meeting him is innocent. Being alone together is innocent. Rina lashed out. You know very well why I married you. If it weren't for your interference, Makoto and I would never have been separated. Makoto is a trust fund kid who loves motorcycles and hangs out with a bunch of thugs. To others, he was a delinquent. But to Rina, he was the epitome of cool. She was obsessed with him. Even willing to give up her high-paying, comfortable job to elope with him. Her father couldn't bear to see her ruin her future and forcibly separated them. When I met Rina, I was already a project manager at a private company. Young, handsome, and successful. I fell in love with her at first sight and pursued her aggressively. Her father, who was a partner in our company, approved of me. With his help, I managed to marry her. After marriage, I treated her with utmost care, trying my best to be a good husband. In our second year of marriage, our daughter Hannah was born. I was immersed in the joy of our happy life, but harsh reality struck me hard. Rena always treated me coldly, but she was devoted to our daughter. If Makoto hadn't returned to the country, our peaceful life would have continued. When Rena heard about Makoto's accident, she immediately abandoned our daughter to see him. As she left, she took the life-saving medication with her. Hannah couldn't be left alone, yet Rena abandoned her. While our daughter was in distress, my wife was worrying about her unforgettable first love. When our daughter died, Rena was by his side, never leaving him. Upon returning home late at night, Rena didn't ask a single word about the daughter she had abandoned. Our daughter, whom she carried for ten months, risking her life to give birth to. I screamed at her. Is Makoto so important that he's worth more than our daughter's life? Rina was enraged. Are you afraid that if Makoto and I rekindle our romance, I'll divorce you? I remained silent for a while before speaking calmly. If you're so attached to your first love, let's get a divorce. All these years, I've treated her with utmost care, fearing she'd suffer any grievance. On Valentine's Day and anniversaries, I showered her with gifts. Even if she wanted the stars, I'd try to get them for her. Yet she was never satisfied, constantly giving me the cold shoulder and often talking about divorce. Since she wanted a divorce so much, I'd give it to her. Rina exploded at the word divorce. Oscar, I just delivered some medicine to Makoto. Is that worth such a reaction? She relied on my love for her, recklessly hurting me. She maintained her ambiguous relationship with her ex, convinced I wouldn't dare bring up divorce. But this time, she'd miscalculated. I was heartbroken. I'll have the divorce papers drafted by the lawyer and sent to you. Rina's voice was sharp. Oscar, are you serious? She rushed into the room, looking for our daughter, all along. She used our daughter to manipulate me. I closed my eyes in pain. Stop looking. Our daughter is already. Rena slapped me hard. Where did you hide her? She threatened. After the divorce, you won't get custody of our daughter. Thinking of our daughter, my throat tightened, and my eyes welled up with tears. If my wife knew she had given the life-saving medication to her unforgettable first love, leading to our daughter's death, would she regret it? Chapter 4 my wife was convinced I was hiding our daughter and took me to court with a lawsuit. That night, we had a huge argument, ending on bad terms. She ignored our daughter and left the house in the middle of the night, worried about her safety. I quickly drove out to follow her. She didn't go to her friend's house but instead knocked on the door of her unforgettable first love's home. The sight that greeted me left me frozen in place. My wife, Rena, was sweetly nestled in Makoto's arms, complaining about me. Oscar, that bastard, used every trick to force me to marry him and now he wants a divorce. She cried pitifully, looking so delicate and sorrowful. Makoto held her closely, comforting her. Marrying you is his blessing from a past life. He's a fool for not appreciating it. Divorce him then. Rena wiped her tear-streaked eyes, looking obsessively at the men before her. If my father hadn't forcibly separated us, we wouldn't have been apart. Makoto's eyes were also red. I regret not holding on, letting Uncle Lin break us apart. Every day without you has been like living in hell. I couldn't deceive my heart so I flew all the way back to find you. Their gazes locked, and the atmosphere grew increasingly intimate. The next second, 
They were kissing passionately. This scene deeply pierced my eyes. Betrayal cutting into me like a knife. No matter how many years had passed, Rina would always choose Makoto over me. Five years of marriage now seemed like a ridiculous joke. I naively thought that daily companionship would gradually make her love me. Now, it seems I was only fooling myself. Only now do I understand what it feels like to be heartbroken. Catching them in the act. I should have stormed in and slapped my cheating wife. But reason told me to control myself and stay calm. After all. She was the woman I had loved for so many years. I decided to give her one last shred of dignity. Returning home in despair. My mind was filled with images of my wife's betrayal. I let out a low growl. Slamming my fist into the wall. My knuckles bleeding. But I felt no pain. Punching the wall again and again. The physical pain was nothing compared to the pain in my heart. My wife had reunited with her first love. Lost in their happiness. Completely forgetting our daughter's death. I had no time to mourn. Taking care of my daughter's funeral arrangements alone. With a heavy heart, I called family and friends to inform them of her death. Everyone was shocked to hear the news. Hannah's heart surgeries had been successful, and my wife was a pharmaceutical researcher. Such a tragedy shouldn't have happened, but I couldn't bring myself to announce my wife's betrayal, that she had taken the life-saving medication for her first love. To spite me, my wife blocked all my contacts and played the disappearing act. I never expected my wife to be so heartless. Chapter 5 After the incident with my daughter, I was drowning in grief, unable to pull myself out. One day, several burly men barged into my home and started beating me without saying a word. It turned out my wife had hired thugs, threatening me to hand over our daughter. I showed them the black and white photo of my daughter. This is who you're looking for. They exchanged puzzled looks. We're looking for a living person. Stop trying to fool us with a dead person's photo. They searched every corner of the house but couldn't find who they were looking for. In the end, they left disappointed. That night, my wife, who had been missing for days, finally returned. Rena threw the divorce papers in my face, saying with disgust, I've signed the divorce papers, now, give me back my daughter. The anger I had suppressed for so long ignited, Rena, are you in such a hurry to divorce me so you can be with Makoto? My wife didn't hide her love, the person I love has always been Makoto, don't think you can use marriage to bind me. And of course, I'll be taking custody of our daughter. I gave a bitter laugh, you left without a word and didn't care about our daughter, aren't you afraid she'll be angry with you and never forgive you? Rena slapped me hard across the face. Oscar, is this how you educate our daughter? To win custody, you're trying to turn her against me. You disgust me. Her insults tore my already shattered heart to pieces. I angrily confronted her. Rena, have I ever mistreated you, when you didn't want to be separated from your parents? I resigned and moved to your city, starting from scratch and working my way up to an executive position, to provide you with a comfortable life. I worked myself to the bone every day without complaint. Why do you treat my sincere love with such contempt? Rina's eyes were full of mockery. If you hadn't confessed your feelings to me at the wrong time, my father wouldn't have forced Makoto and me apart. Makoto suffered a lot abroad all these years, and it's all your fault. As she spoke, her eyes burned with intense hatred, as if I were a heinous criminal. Seven years of dedication meant nothing to her but a burden. If she had been honest with me from the start, I would have let her go. I wouldn't have clung to her. My poor daughter became the victim of this ridiculous love triangle. Unable to find our daughter, Rina took out her anger on me. Oscar. I should have let those thugs beat you to death. The heart that had gone numb with pain was now wrenched with fresh agony. My wife of seven years saw me as an obstacle to her true love, wishing for my death. Her heart was colder than stone. Rena's patience was running thin. Do you think hiding our daughter will stop me? She dialed the police. Hello, police. My husband has kidnapped our daughter. Please send someone over immediately. She said she wanted to personally send me to jail. The news of our daughter's death would be delivered by the police. Would my wife cry her heart out when she found out she had caused our daughter's death? Chapter 6 The police arrived swiftly after receiving the call. Rena pointed at me with an elated expression. Officer. He's the kidnapper. Arrest him immediately. The police officer recognized me instantly. Mr. Wu. Was it your wife who called the police? Just a few days ago, I had gone to the police station to cancel my daughter's household registration. And Officer Lin had been the one to assist me. He had sympathized with my situation and offered his condolences. I explained to the police. Lin and I are in the process of getting a divorce. She insists that I've hidden our daughter. Officer Lin understood the situation and tried to communicate with my wife. Mrs. Lin. Little Wuhanna has already passed away. I was the one who processed her deregistration. Rena's expression changed several times. Refusing to believe that our daughter had passed away. Oscar. You've colluded with the police to deceive me just to gain custody of our daughter. How can you curse your own daughter like this? Aren't you afraid of divine retribution? The police sternly warned. Mrs. Lin. Making false accusations can have legal consequences. Seeing Rena's disbelief, 
I took her directly to our daughter's memorial. In the center of the memorial was Hannah's black and white portrait. She smiled radiantly in the picture, but her life had forever stopped at the age of five. Rena saw the portrait and, as if triggered, knocked over the offerings on the table. She frantically questioned me, Oscar, I'm asking you one last time, where are you hiding our daughter? I looked at her with mockery, our daughter is right in front of you, can't you see? Rena's voice grew sharper, do you think you can deceive me with such crude tricks? She searched everywhere for our daughter, Hannah. Stop playing hide and seek with mommy, okay? Her calls were met with an endless silence. My wife grew desperate. Hannah, if you don't come out now, mommy will be very angry. Every time they played hide and seek, if mommy pretended to be angry, Hannah would obediently come out. She was always so well behaved, never wanting to upset her mother. I tidied up the mess she made, my emotions now more settled. When Makoto had his accident, our daughter fell ill. I begged you to bring back the life-saving medication. But you only cared about your unforgettable first love, ignoring our daughter's life. Rena tried to shift the blame onto me. Our daughter fell ill right after I left. How could it be such a coincidence? Are you trying to get back at me by deliberately harming our daughter? I roared. Rena, enough. Our daughter is dead. You killed her. Rena staggered back, still in denial. Hannah is alive. She's not dead. You've hidden her. Do you think I'll believe this act with the police? She ripped down Hannah's portrait from the wall and smashed it to the ground. Rena wrecked the memorial. Only dead people have memorials. Our Hannah isn't dead. You're going to bring bad luck to Hannah with this. I looked at the chaos around me, the veins in my forehead throbbing violently. Hannah doesn't want to see you. Get out. Chapter 7. During the divorce, I left the house and car to my ex-wife. She didn't express gratitude. Instead, she took everything as her due. She said it was her compensation for emotional distress. What she deserved. I stayed silent, packed my bags, and left the house. As I left, I filled my suitcase with Hannah's belongings. They were my daughter's keepsakes, and I had to take them with me. My ex-wife and her unforgettable first love blocked me at the door. She glanced at me disdainfully. Oscar, I need to check your luggage to see if you've taken anything you shouldn't have. She suspected I had taken valuable items from the house. So she brought Makoto to block the door. Makoto fanned the flames. Rena, who has left with nothing but the clothes on his back. Everything in this house belongs to you. If he takes anything, it's theft. Egged on by him. Rena dumped my suitcase's contents onto the ground. My daughter's belongings scattered everywhere. Makoto glanced dismissively. Just worthless. Unlucky junk. If he wants to take it, let him. I punched Makoto square in the face. You have no right to speak about my daughter's things. The fury in my chest ignited, nearly causing me to lose control. Rena protectively shielded her first love. Oscar, if you dare to hit him again, I'll have you thrown in jail. I carefully picked up Hannah's belongings, cradling them like precious treasures. Rena. I have evidence of your affair during our marriage and proof that you let our daughter miss her best chance at treatment. What will our family and friends think when they find out? My ex-wife's face twisted in anger. Oscar, are you threatening me? She cared deeply about her image and reputation, and she certainly wouldn't want her scandals exposed. I chuckled lightly. I just want to take our daughter's keepsakes. I don't want anything else. Makoto, still smarting from the punch, muttered. If she wants to take the kids' things, let her. No need to lose the house and car over it. Rena looked conflicted, but, Makoto cut her off, that child is gone, it's not her fault, we'll have a healthy child together, right? Rena's slender arms wrapped around his neck, I've always wanted to have a child with you, my ex-wife and her unforgettable first love flirted openly, treating me like I was invisible, the dead weight in my chest throbbed with sharp pain, taking my daughter's keepsakes, I walked away without looking back, chapter 8, barely a moment after our daughter's death, my ex-wife flew to Europe for a vacation with her unforgettable first love. She posted on social media, after all this time, it's still you. Makoto shared a picture of them holding hands and a screenshot of their plane tickets. In the photos, my ex-wife was beaming, her face showing no sign of the grief from losing a child. They kissed sweetly by the sea, felt the ocean breeze on the beach, and watched the sunrise and sunset together. Meanwhile, the balance in my salary account was rapidly depleting. Each expenditure a significant amount. Seeing the balance nearing zero, I notified the bank to unlink her supplementary card. Every penny she spent on Makoto after the divorce, I would reclaim without fail. After unbinding the supplementary card, Rena's number quickly appeared on my screen. Her voice was sharp. Oscar, does it hurt you to see me spending your money? You should be honored that I'm willing to spend it. I gripped the phone tightly, veins bulging, speaking through clenched teeth, using my hard-earned money to support a pretty boy. You're really something. You spent 260,000 yuan today. Transfer it back to my account within three days. If there's even one cent missing, you'll face a lawsuit. Rena's arrogance faded instantly. 
Is it necessary to take 260,000 to court? In the past, you never blinked when I maxed out the card. I interrupted her with a cold laugh. Don't think you can fool me anymore. If you want money, ask Makoto. Rina tried to guilt trip me. Makoto suffered a lot abroad, and it was a struggle for him to come back. He doesn't have any money. He's in financial trouble. Can't you help a little? My stomach churned, nearly making me vomit from the disgust. Makoto's lack of money is none of my business. If you think love is enough, then you two can starve together for all I care. With a loud bang, I hung up the phone. Rina's salary wasn't low, but she was a spoiled rich girl who was used to spending extravagantly. Coupled with the expenses for our daughter's treatment, she had saved very little. With her supplementary card useless, she lost interest in her vacation and quickly booked a flight back home. She sold her car to pay back the money she had taken from my account. My former father-in-law called me, already aware of my divorce from Rina. He sighed. Rina has been spoiled and willful since she was a child. I failed to educate her properly. Oscar. I hadn't broadcasted our divorce, but Rina had been flaunting her reunion with her first love on social media, forgetting to block her parents. Naturally, news of our divorce couldn't be hidden. Thinking of our deceased daughter, my throat tightened, and I spoke with a choked voice. On the night Hannah fell ill, Rina went to see Makoto. My former father-in-law was shocked and quickly realized his granddaughter's death was connected to his daughter. He was furious. I thought Rina was just a bit willful, but I never imagined she could be so irresponsible. Not long after my call with Mr. Lin, Rina's call came through. She was full of resentment. Oscar, you must have slandered me in front of my dad. Now he wants to sever our father-daughter relationship. With our relationship severed, her family was her last refuge. Now, with everyone turning against her, even her final refuge was gone. I spoke with mockery. In your belief, love is above all. With Makoto by your side, what hardship can't you overcome? Rina tried to comfort herself. Even if Makoto is a pauper, I'll stand by his side. Even if we have to drink spoiled soup and eat pickled vegetables, life will be sweet. I smirked. Then I wish you happiness. Chapter 9 On the grassy field a girl played joyfully, a sweet smile on her face, her eyes were bright, brighter than the stars in the night sky, when my daughter passed away, I made a bold decision, I donated her corneas to a little girl who had lost her sight in a car accident, helping her regain her vision, she would see the world for my daughter, experiencing its wonders and beauty, although my daughter was gone, she remained in this world in a different way, whenever I missed her, I would visit the little girl who had received my daughter's corneas, the little girl ran up to me, her dark, bright eyes blinking, Uncle, why do I feel so sad when I see you? I gently stroked the girl's cheek, as if my daughter were still beside me. She had my daughter's corneas and seemed to share her emotions. The little girl hugged me. Uncle, I don't know why, but I suddenly want to hug you. I held her tightly. Sweetheart, promise me you'll live a happy and joyful life. The girl nodded with understanding. Uncle, even though I've never met you before, you feel very familiar to me. Will you come to see me often? Her adorable manner made me smile. Of course I will. She hooked her pinky with mine. Then let's make a promise. A promise you can't break. A young, beautiful woman came running over. Out of breath. Her name was Isabel. A single mother. She recognized me immediately. Mr. Wu. It's you. I felt a bit embarrassed. Miss E. I came to see Emmy. I hope I didn't disturb you. Isabel was very courteous. You donated your daughter's corneas. Giving my Emmy the chance to see again. I'm eternally grateful. Her daughter had been injured in a car accident and her heartless husband refused to pay for the medical expenses, even asking for a divorce. I had been betrayed by my wife and lost my daughter, now alone as well. Perhaps our shared misfortune made us feel like kindred spirits, meeting too late. Isabel's tears fell like pear blossoms. Mr. Wu, you must be a loving person. Emmy is very lucky to have someone like you, who is selflessly giving, to regain her sight. Her eyes were full of gratitude when she looked at me. I felt a myriad of emotions. Miss Zhuang. You must love your daughter very much. Emmy is lucky to have a mother like you. If only Rina had loved her daughter as much, the tragedy might never have happened. Would my daughter have resented her mother as she left this world? Isabel's almond-shaped eyes curved into a smile. Mr. Wu, if you're willing, Emmy can be your goddaughter. You can come see her anytime you want. Her bright smile seemed to dispel all the gloom in the world. Every expression lively and engaging. I watched her, realizing my sudden rudeness, and quickly looked away. We should ask Emmy what she thinks. Emmy jumped into my arms. Uncle, I like you. Can you be my godfather? Through the girl's clear and lively eyes, I saw Hannah's reflection. Hannah, let this little girl named Emmy live a happy life for you. Chapter 10 After the divorce, my ex-wife constantly flaunted her sweet daily life with Makoto on social media. When she was with me, she enjoyed delicacies like bird's nest soup and shark fin. Now, with someone else, 
She was living on simple meals. She posted, love makes even simple meals sweet and fulfilling. I laughed mockingly and blocked her updates. When our maid cooked bird's nest soup and shark fin for her daily, she complained that I was a hindrance to her weight loss. I treated her like a queen, but she spoke ill of me without restraint in front of other men. If she wants to endure hardships, let her. Free from the ties of my previous life, I thrived in my career, climbing higher and higher. I became a trusted lieutenant of the general manager, who appreciated my outstanding abilities and promoted me to vice president of the company. I heard through the grapevine that Makoto wanted to start a business. Rina, with her love-struck mind, sold the house to support his venture. Makoto claimed he needed more funds for his business, convincing Rina to give him more money. Rina sold her designer bags and jewelry, even took out an online loan of 3 million yuan. Nearly 5 million yuan of startup capital was transferred to Makoto's account. She eagerly anticipated Makoto's successful business, dreaming of a life as a wealthy lady. But once he got the money, Makoto vanished, blocking all her contact methods. Homeless, Rina came to me, hoping I would give her some money. Even though Makoto had taken everything from her, she was still in denial. Makoto must be working on a big secret project. He just can't tell me right now. He loves me so much. How could he deceive me? I sneered. If he's so great, why are you here asking me for help? Rina shamelessly asked. Lend me 50,000 yuan. I'll pay you back when I have the money. You make over a million a year. Can't you spare 50,000? Seeing my indifference, she grew desperate. We were married once. Can you really bear to see me homeless? I looked at her coldly. Rina, isn't your current situation your own doing? We're divorced. Your well-being is no longer my concern. Rina clung to my sleeve, looking pitifully at me. I have nowhere else to go. Can you at least let me stay the night? If you don't help me, I'll have to sleep on the street. In the past, a few soft words from her would have made me do anything for her. Even if she asked for my life, I wouldn't have hesitated. But she had worn down my love, leaving me completely disillusioned. I coldly shook off her hand. Rina, even if you starve to death on the street, it's your own fault. Rina clung to me. Oscar. I know you still love me. What you said just now was in anger. Oscar, I made your favorite dishes, Isabel said, running out with a cheerful smile, which froze on her face upon seeing Rina. Am I interrupting something? I walked over and gently put my arm around Isabel's shoulders, explaining, she's just someone insignificant. Rina rushed over, demanding, Oscar, are you treating me this coldly because you're involved with this vixen? She lunged at Isabel, but I pushed her to the ground. I warned her coldly, if you disrespect Isabel, I won't be kind to you. Rina looked at me pitifully. Oscar, are you really going to abandon me? Chapter 11 Seeing my ex-wife's miserable situation gave me a sense of vindication. Beyond hatred, I felt nothing for her. When did I stop loving her? Even I couldn't pinpoint the exact moment. Perhaps it was when she repeatedly deceived me, secretly meeting Makoto. Or maybe it was when she abandoned our daughter, taking the life-saving medication to save Makoto instead. This time, I truly wanted nothing to do with her. Makoto had been stringing her along, pretending to love her, until he drained every last bit of value from her and then disappeared with the money. Rina discovered his travel plans and chased after him across the country. This pursuit nearly cost her life. As soon as she landed, she was kidnapped, and the captors demanded a million dollar ransom. Terrified, she called her parents in China, begging them to pay the ransom. Despite having cut ties with her, the Lin couple promptly arranged the ransom upon hearing their daughter's life was in danger. At Mr. Lin's request, I contacted the Chinese embassy, seeking their intervention to secure her safe return. The embassy worked diligently with local police, hoping they would mobilize forces to rescue her from the kidnapper's den. In a place like Myanmar, where human life is often disregarded, even receiving the ransom wouldn't guarantee her safety. Thanks to the combined efforts, Rina, though shaken and bearing signs of mistreatment, managed to board a flight back home. She was visibly distressed. During the kidnapping, I realized many things. The figure I chased in my youth was merely a dream I wove for myself. When I woke from the dream, I faced the consequences. I wanted no further entanglements with her and turned to leave. She grabbed my hand. Her voice strained. Oscar, thank you for taking care of me all these years. I've never regretted having Hannah. My tone was distant and cold. Rena, I've decided to return to Nanchang. We probably won't see each other again. Her eyes reddened. Miss E is so gentle and understanding. She must be a southern girl. Right. Are you together? Unintentionally. My gaze softened. Isabel is wonderful. We share common interests and never run out of things to talk about. She's from the south and isn't accustomed to living in the north. We decided it's best to move back south. Rena's nose turned red, and she trembled as she asked, Oscar, is there really no chance for us? I laughed lightly. Every step I took before felt like walking on a knife's edge, bleeding yet refusing to give up. Eventually, I realized that you can't force feelings. 
Tears streamed down Rena's face as she realized she had lost the one who loved her most and now deeply regretted it. What can I do to make you come back to me? Painful memories flashed through my mind like a slideshow, making it unbearable to continue. We can't go back. It's too late. Rena's tears fell in large drops, and she finally let go of my hand. As I turned to leave, she didn't try to stop me. Her voice came in broken fragments. Oscar, you must be happy. I will be. I thought I will definitely be happy.